Hey guys, Reckoning here, welcome back to Let's Play Kato Shoujo. In the last part, we technically started the Hanako arc. And... Damn, what else did we do? I did this an hour ago! What else did we do? Oh, what is my memory? Why is my memory so terrible? Well, needless... We're starting the Hanako arc. And that's all that needs, really needs to be said. Alrighty. Come to think of it, what's Hee Chan doing here? Class is over, you should be having fun. We just had a little chat. Oh no, it's not detention, is it? You in trouble, Hee Chan? No, I'm not. Is Hee Chan in trouble, teacher? No, he's not. Muto si sighs deeply, and I feel that I have to s help Misha to get her off of the teacher's back. So, what do you need? Here's a list. I can try to find the plywood from somewhere if there's none in the art room. She offers me the note she's holding. I take it, hesitating a bit. I said I'd help you, but this has no implications on whether I'm joining the council or not. Aww. Still, thanks, Yi Chen. Try to be quick. We're still in a stall building streak. We are in a stall building streak now. We must hurry, hurry, hurry. She bounces, bounces out of the classroom, leaving me and the teacher looking at each other with something that feels like a silent agreement. Well, there you have it, Nikai. You have something to do now. Please don't sound so smug. Look at the list with the number of items ranging from paint to plywood. God damn it. I'll be going then. Waving the long list limply at the teacher, I ex exit the hallway. The classrooms closest to ours are designated belonging to classes 3 1 and 3 2 on the right side, and 3 4 on the left side, each door looking exactly the same. Further down the corridor, still with identical doors, are rooms that I didn't think were eaten reused for classes. I guess the art room is not a classroom as such. I carefully push open the furthest door and peek in. It's a classroom, but it seems rather badly kept and not in use. Am I in the right place? Desks and chairs are all around the room. A thin layer of dust settled on them. There are some eases in the corner, so at least it looks, this looks like the right place. The room is flushed in sunlight from the big window, shadow cre shadows creeping all over the desks. Specks of dust are dancing in the stagnant air, making the beams of light almost visible. Jokingly, I'll call into an empty room. Anybody? Something catches my eye and I stop mid-sentence. We all know who this is. Sitting on a desk is a short-haired girl, curiously wearing a boy's uniform, with a fork between her toes and a morsel of food stuck firmly on the end. This odd way of dining seems to be caused by her apparent lack of hands, but her presence here is what takes me back even more. How did I miss her before? She's sitting in a corner very still, but I still somehow took her as part of the furnishing, or a statue at first glance. I'm not being too observant today as a whole. The girl seems to be frozen in place, staring at me with their huge eyes like a rabbit in headlights. She's staring at me, her mouth wide open, ready to accept the fork. I'm staring at her, my mouth wide open, suddenly remembering I didn't finish my sentence and trying to think if I should. This weird stalemate keeps us both stunned in the silence, punctuated only by the walk clock ticking rhythmically. Hello? The girl stuffs the fork full in her mouth and is now staring at me expectantly while she This is a bit awkward. Um, hello. I was told to pick up some supplies from here. For some festival stalls, I think. I didn't think there would be someone here. There isn't. That's why I came here, too. She picks up another fork full. Doesn't that mean you're here, then? She raises her eyebrows as if she was suspecting my observation was false. You're pretty observant. I guess it does. But who are you? This girl's pretty straightforward, isn't she? I'm Nakai. I sound Nakai. I just transferred in on Monday. I'm Rin. Tezuka Rin. Rin Tezuka. I won't shake hands with you, but at least we know who we are now. That's very nice. Her deadpan manner of talking makes it hard to determine whether she's joking about shaking hands or not. Kind of bothers me, joking about these matters doesn't feel appropriate at all. While I'm trying to figure out what's appropriate and whether this girl is, she seems to have lost interest in me as now. It's now gazing yearningly back at food. Can I continue my lunch? If you don't mind me, I won't mind you. If you need to get your stuff, the supplies are at the back. Go right ahead, but lunch? School's already over for the day. What word would you use then? There's no word for, word for a meal you eat after lunch before dinner, right? It bothers me very much too, but I don't really know what I should say. I don't think you're supposed to eat a meal before lunch and dinner to begin with. 
but I'm hungry now and my delicious box lunch would go to waste otherwise. I have curry. It's very delicious. With much decisiveness, Rin once again picks up the fork between her toes, and with his, at least as much impoliteness, she points it straight at me. So, Nakai, what brings you to this place? Like I said, I was told to look for these things. No, the school. From outside, you look fine. Is your problem inside? I come to a full stop, opening my mouth but not getting a word out. I... I can guess. I'm good at guessing. Better than most people. Rin cuts me off before I can answer her question, or skirt around it somehow. I don't know which I would have done. I froze in front of this issue again. I haven't even told anyone here about my condition, or maybe it's only because it hasn't really come up. I do get the feeling that not being issues of this is part of the social code here, as the teacher said. What if the people here could relate? Probably not any better than any normal person could. I can't relate to Shizune's circumstances, or Lily's either. Naturally, while I go through this in my head, Rin keeps considering what my condition could be, with an overtly com contemplative look on her face. She puts her fo fork between her lips and leans back, looking at the ceiling as if the answer was written up there. A beam of light illuminates her face from the window side, creating a mask of dark shadow on the other side. I don't think it's anything in your head, and something in your guts would be boringly ordinary like this lunch of mine, and less delicious. The problem must be in your pants. This messed up Sherlock Holmes kind of statement and the sheer lack of tact it was delivered with catches me completely off guard. I think I might have reeled back even physically as Rin's eyes widened in revelation of astonishment. So I was right. There's something wrong with your tackle, isn't there? Still partially in shock, but recognizing the need to reply something, I spit out the first thing I could think of. No, nothing like that. I have a heart problem. Earthmia. I said it. Well, I blurted it out, but I said it. The girl in front of me purses her lips together and glowers at me, looking very disappointed. How boring. Trouble in the pants would be, have been much more scandalous. What's with this reaction? I'm sorry to let you down. I forgive you. Just, I collect people in a person with, you know, that kind of problem would have been really great. Collect people? People with different problems. Huh, so you just, like, go around asking people what's wrong with them? Pretty much. I see. With little left to say, Rin resumes at lunch and the conversation dies away, but I keep thinking about what she was said what it was said. It's the first time I told anyone about my condition. All the other people have either known about it already or heard about it from someone else. Or didn't need to know about it, like every other student here so far. Should I have told this a natural part of introductions? Is it expected of me? Hi, I'm Masao. I have a very serious heart condition. Is that how I'm supposed to go around introducing myself from now on? As if our disabilities would define us. What a disgusting thought. Brings up a good point. I believe, I don't, I don't remember where it was, but there's like a message, like a paragraph, um, before this game actually came out, saying to enjoy the demo, which was basically just Act 1 that was put up on like hentai sites. I don't really know why, because Act 1 doesn't have any nudity in it, but then again, it's referring to an adult game, so it kind of makes sense. And it basically says... I forget what it says now. It was basically that the disabilities don't make the people. That, you know, basically they're not divine, defined by what they are. Like, you don't define Shizune by the fact that she's deaf, or Lily by the fact that she's blind. Or Rin by the fact that she has no arms. The fact that Rin doesn't have arms doesn't make her Rin. It's basically what I'm trying to get at. Whatever. As if her disabilities would define us. What a disgusting thought. Maybe this Tezuka girl just has an unnatural interest in such things. She's quite odd. As I walk to the back of the room to pick up the items on Misha's list, a chance opens to study Rin from the corner of my eye. Her hair is a burnt auburn, almost orange, and cropped short. Long hair will probably be impossible with no arms. The boy's uniform and the lack of arms make her look very thin, almost scrawny. She's not particularly pretty, except for her murky green eyes, which flicker restlessly, restlessly from below her short bangs, even when she eats. The distance and the shadows make it seem like they don't reflect sunlight at all, at all, but instead absorb all of it within them like deep wells. She moves her feet almost as deftly as a normal person would use their arms. However, I can see how this sight would discomfort people, especially while eating. It makes me feel a bit uncomfortable, at least. 
I hesitate to think about the word unnatural, but it's too late now, isn't it? I keep searching the cabins and shelves for Misha's things, but after enough time passes, the silence grows too uncomfortable, so I try to force some conversation out of this strange girl. So, do you always eat alone in this late, or do you get the occasional visitor? Visitors, maybe you're my first occasional visitor, but I don't always eat alone either. Sometimes I eat with a certain person on the roof, if she's not horsing around. Horsing? She likes to do sports. Oh. And that's all I can think of to say. Both of us fall silent again as we're in forks the last bits of her meal to her mouth. I look down at my hall and double check what Misha's list. It seems I have everything except plywood. Um, so I think I have all the things now. That's very nice for you. Don't feel obliged to stay. I was about to take a nap anyway. You need to do what are you ever gonna do with that stuff anyway, right? Or perhaps you like to watch girls sleeping. Uh I'm not sure what to make of this, but Rin looks serious. Even if I did, I think I have to be going. Uh, I'll catch you around, Tezuka. You can call me Rin. I fear that our relationship is at this point good enough to warrant this much. I was already turning to make my exit, but she draws me back in. Fine, then I'm Hassel. Then you are. Rin looks at me hard in the eyes, but that intimidating feeling you get when someone stares at you isn't there. It's like she's not a it's actually not looking at me at all. She blinks a couple of times, and I can't figure out why a pause like this just popped up between us out of nowhere. See you later, Hassel. There's something like a tiny smile in there in her face, maybe. Maybe Rin likes you from the start. Can't really tell. Eh, we'll figure out when we get to that path. I quietly back into the room. As I shut the door in front of my face, I whisper to myself, What an intriguing person. From inside, I hear a muffled sing-song voice. I heard that. What did she hear? I jump at the sudden appearance of Misha, who I had not heard approaching despite the completely empty hallway. Somehow she'd gotten to jumping distance of, of me without making a sound. Creepy. It briefly, briefly reminds me of Kenji's nutty theory about a global feminist conspiracy, but I push that thought aside. Shizune, standing slightly behind Misha, looks aloof as if she couldn't have heard the remark that drew Misha's attention, but Misha is visibly excited. No wait, more importantly, who's in there? There's no club meetings today. She tries to curiously peek past me, even the door, though the door prevents her from seeing anyone. What are you doing here? You took so long we had to come check what was wrong. That's no good, Hee-chan. She wags her finger at me scoldingly. I found plywood, but everything else you're still missing because you were tardy. Oh, sorry, uh, I got the things here. I was just going to bring them. I think you're up to some mischief, Hee-chan. Who was in it with you, I wonder? Misha signs something quickly to Shizune, pointing there at her own ear a couple of times. Shizune immediately pushes her way past me and opens the door into the classroom I just left. I can only imagine the shock she is experiencing. With Shizune's diligence and attitude, the insolence of daring to deface school properly by sleeping on top of it must be too much to bear. And indeed, she stares at Rin, frozen in place apart from the slight but noticeable trembling of her shoulders, from suppressed rage, I'm sure. Instead of blowing up, Shizune just takes a few deep breaths, adjusts her glasses, and slams the door shut, trying to turning to sign furiously at Misha. Maybe she did blow up, but I just can't understand it. She shoots a very loaded stare at me, too, as if it was somehow my fault that Ren is sleeping under one of the tables. Well... With what we know about Shizune, Sao, and tables, it kind of makes sense. <laughs> Whatever. I hope she's not getting any funny ideas about the reason of my tardiness. Well... Considering the fact that that very same thing happens between the two of you, Sal, I don't know where she would get that idea. Hello. Rin's voice comes from the other side of the door and takes a few eye blinks to realize she might have trouble opening it. Might? Oh, Sal. I open the door to find Rin directly behind us, looking at us with a half-interested, half-sleepy face. Hello. Miss Tezuka, what do you think you were doing? You're absolutely not permitted to use school properties for such a disgraceful activity. We know this coming from Shizune. 
and Shizune, you did the exact same thing. You did pretty much the same thing with the table. You know, what you did with that table would be considered disgraceful. She doesn't really have a leg to stand on here. That's that's beside the point, though. It sure is suddenly very crowded in here. I didn't know I was this popular. It's hard to say whether she's happy or unhappy about this turn of events. At any rate, she ignored Shizune and Misha's scolding, so they have no choice but to drop the issue. Shizune taps Misha's shoulder, points at Ren, then makes some quick signs. Popularity aside, please don't do that anymore. Anyway, how's your project going? Will it be done for the festival? Rin looks at them blankly, apparently at ease under the pressure Shizune's cold stare is putting on her. I keep wondering about that myself, too. And? We'll think about it harder. As Misha signs a reply to Shizune, her face turns into an unsatisfied frown. Mr. Zuka, please try to take this seriously. It'll be a disaster. God damn it! Rin nods assertively. We'll think more seriously. Misha actually giggles at that, but Shizune doesn't, not even after translation. She just shakes her head, takes the materials from me, and takes off with Misha in tow. Rin friends thoughtfully as she looks after the retreating student council duo. How rude. It's true, though. I must finish my project before the weekend. There will be dire consequences if I don't. The end of the world as we know it. Like weekends usually are, but more dire. Much more dire. Maybe I'll postpone my nap to unforeseen future. I'm about to ask what project she has and what are the apocalyptic consequences, but she walks back into the art classroom. Since you have nothing to do, would you give me a hand? This paint can doesn't fit into my bag, but I need it. She kicks lightly at a huge can of paint that's lying on the floor next to the table she was sitting and sleeping on. It lets out a dull clang. Being the gentleman I am, I naturally pick it up. Heavy. Yeah, sure. Where do you need to take it? Away. And with that, she takes off to the hallway, me and the paint can following since there's little choice for either of us. The hallway is quiet and empty now with Shizune and Misha gone, so we too leave toward the stairwell at the other end. Well, kind of think of it, you know, Shizune could be in the hallway, but, you know, she can't really talk, so she wouldn't be that, that noisy. Then again, if she snaps her fingers, then, you know, she could change that very quickly. Every 10 or 15 or 20 steps, I have to change the can from one hand to another because the thin handle cuts in my palm. At least it keeps my arms from tiring too fast. Rin strolls on beside me with an uneven pace that I have trouble matching, or maybe I'm walking weird because of the extra weight. It seems one of us is constantly walking too slow or too fast, and I can't figure out which. Two flights of stairs below, trouble appears in the form of the head nurse in his fox-like grin. Ah, Mr. Nakai, what a happy coincidence. Tezuka too, of course. He nods courteously to Rin, who does not acknowledge him back, then turns to me because it's obvious, obviously it's me who he has some business with. There's something I forgot to mention on Monday. Forgot? Do I know you're pronouncing it? Whatever. I nod and wait impassively because I can't even begin to guess what he forgot. The feeling of the handle de delving deeper into my skin doesn't make me feel enthusiastic about this interruption either. It's about your medications. Since you haven't been the that long in your current medication, there might be some unexpected side effects, which might require adjusting dosages or even changing the weather to another med kind of medication. So we'll do a few tests regularly, but what I'd like... What I'd want is for you to keep an eye on everything in your condition that feels off, if you get what I mean. Nausea, headache, anything. Come see me if something happens. Alright. So how are you? Everything fine? I gave up and dropped the can to the floor before answering him. Apparently, this takes longer than my biceps can handle. I'm about to say something generic as an answer, but then I realize how often I've done that lately. Other people have asked me that too, teachers and students here, my parents, visitors, nurses, doctors at the hospital. Everyone seems to be concerned about that. It's not just for a hospital, not so much for a school. Except this school. This is a small school, and both the student base and faculty seem to be very tightly knit. At least, that's the feeling I'm getting. This is not the kind of school that gets transfer students too often. The thought sends shivers up my spine, but I give a generic answer anyway. That's great. Also, one other thing. 
My sources tell me that you've been at neither the school track nor even the pool, so I'd like to know if you've been if you've taken up exercising as I asked. Of course I haven't, but his way of inquiring gives me the feeling I should have been running my ass up at the track since the very first day. You have people spying on me? Not as such, I just happen to know a few people. That's not the issue here, so don't try to slip out of it. Well, I was actually just doing some improvised weightlifting as an exercise. I pick up and lift the can up and down a few times like some sad imitation of a bodybuilder, even though it's weighing down on my arms painfully. The stupid grin disappears from his face for a second, then it comes back like it was never gone. Tezuka, would you give us a second? The nurse grabs me by the shoulder without waiting for Ren's permission, which he didn't need in the first place, and drags me aside. When I told you to exercise, I wasn't joking. I understand that you're still on your first week and all, but please don't ignore the importance of this. The reason I'm coming down this hard on you is that habits are not easy to form. The more you slip and postpone, the harder it will be. It's the same with everything, like dieting. Can you promise me to be more serious about this from now on? We're going to pick maybe. Maybe. No, I mean... He gives me a nasty sort of look when I say that, making me try to take back the word. I mean, I don't know. I'm still trying to get used to this school. I'll promise to try, though. You're not being very convincing there, Hassel. Tip number one. Medical professionals are not amused if you take their advice lightly. What's up with him? As if a day or two would make that much of a difference. I didn't do anything at the hospital, either. Yeah, okay. Sorry. He studies me for a moment, then shrugs, smiling again. Okay, that's more like it. If you go to the school track tomorrow morning, you meet my spy, who probably has no qualms offering a consultation to you if you want to jog a bit. Consultation? See you around. He leaves with a wave of his hand and no answer, and I walk to Ray... Oh. Who's been waiting, idly leaning against the hallway wall and staring at the pale lighting fixtures in the ceiling. Even when I approach, she doesn't move her eyes off them. You getting medications for your heart thingy? Were you listening? Comes out more accusatory than I intended, accidentally lashing out at her. But even so, I don't really want to start talking about it. I just met her. I don't know her. It's not her business. The nurse seems to be happily ignorant about confidentiality, too, talking about that kind of thing in public. But it's not Ren's fault, is it? I look up at her, suddenly feeling a bit guilty. But Ren's just staring past my shoulder quizzically, her head tilted like a bird's. Sigh. I don't know why this is so hard for me. It feels like there's some inexplicable lock that prevents me from being more upfront about this. Yeah, they're from my heart. Will they make you better? No, not really. They just make me a little less worse. Run keeps looking at me for a while longer, and she neither says anything further, nor displays any kind of emotion I can discern. I'm thankful that she doesn't. I think I'm still not quite used to all this. At the hospital, it was easy, but I still haven't sorted my feelings about having to live a normal life with this disability. We leave the main building, and Rin leads us onward toward the dorm. We stop at the small patch of greenery in front of the dorm building. The dorm is built on a slightly elevated ground with a wall and a few trees that everyone has to circle around every time they come or go. It's probably the only inconvenient design in the school. The entire wall made the same kind of bricks that the building is say itself. Self? has been covered with some sort of a painting. Most of it is still mere sketches, quick lines drawn with black and white against the gray plastering that covers most of the, almost the entire length of the wall, but some places look a bit more finished. There are human faces and legs and hands. I can't quite say what the painting as a whole might portray. Stacks of what seem to be paint cans are arranged in piles on the ground beside the wall. See, the left side is hardly up the ground yet. It's because I couldn't get in the mood yesterday, so I gave up and went to Instead, then it was suddenly morning. I have to work on it, but the guys from art class are helping with the negative spaces and face surfaces, whatever, which is a problem. It's easier to paint big areas if there are a lot of people with hands. The reach is better, and it's faster, too. She goes on a tangent of a tangent, waving a little with her arm, or whatever there actually is, to demonstrate even though I got the point already. The white cotton of her sleeve flaps around, and it makes me think it could look sadder than it does. Makes me feel out of place, like almost every tangible reminder the student base's special properties has in the past few days. This girl doesn't notice my dreary feelings, of course, or the fact that she lost me a while ago already, and just keeps on blabbering. So that's why I'm trying to figure out if there is something I need to figure out, and then figure that out before it's too late and all hope is lost. Why would the hope be lost? 
because paint has to be painted and then it has to dry and then it has to be painted over with another kind of paint. It takes time. She finally stops, apparently thinking she's made kind of st some kind of statement that makes sense. I think it's best to start from the top. So, this is your project? You did this? Yes. Yes. All of it? Yes. Nice, but... I stumble with my words, suddenly feeling like I've walked straight into the minefield of political incorrectness. It's okay, you can say it. I probably won't get mad. I blush really hard. I don't really know what would be the right thing to say, if any. It feels that I'm way more sensitive than Ren is, though. This is really awkward. Don't you want to ask? How do you paint without hands? See? I'm an easy person to talk to, right? With my feet. I almost guessed that already, but isn't that hard to do? You're good at guessing. Anyway, I don't think it is, but maybe I'm used to it by now. I can't get my mind around the fact that she could be an artist, but seeing how adept she was using her feet to eat, I figure painting might not be a problem either. Neither of us has anything more to add to the subject. The afternoon light works pretty well. I was afraid it would look too flat, but it's not like that after all. I think it's actually pretty interesting. I wanted to see what it looks like in dim light. You think it's flat? Eh, well, paintings tend to be flat. Not like that flat. You know, flat, like some people are. No substance, no meat where there should be some. I know a few girls who... Okay, I get it. I, I couldn't really tell. I'm not thinking with art. I can't name any artists or artistic terms. So I don't really have anything to say. Rin shrugs her shoulders at that, saying, Suit yourself without saying it, and looks up at the sky, as if trying to look for something up there. She's very interested with clouds. I didn't think I'd get any actual work done, but if you give me a hand with the paints, I can do a little work before it's too dark. I wanted to get a halogen lamp like the ones they have at the sports track, but there aren't any. Rin sure is quick to recruit my help, as was Shizune. Really, it makes me feel that the festival is such a big project that every pair of hands is needed. Really? I do you really need to put it that way? Why not? I'm not really sure if I can be any help. Any help, though. It's just mixing campaigns. You can do that, probably. Do you have motor control problems like, you know, those people who have some? Cerebral palsy, maybe? Not that I know of. I get it. Heart thinking has nothing to do with that. It gives me a sly look for no reason. No, it doesn't. Let's do it, then. So she sits on the empty wooden box and very naturally picks up a wide brush between the toes of her right bare foot. Her bare right foot, whatever. I open a few of the cans and pour some of the contents into shallow bowl for mixing. The thick paints flow lazily from the can to the bowl, like syrup. I mix them, creating funny, hypnotic-looking swirl patterns that make, melt quickly into each other to form a new monotone hue. Rin sits to work every now and then asking me for a hand with something or the other. Finding different brushes is easy enough, but mixing the paints to be the exact tone this girl is apparently seeing in her hand is a frustrating ordeal. She wants precision down to the last milliliter before she's satisfied, but her instructions are obscure at best. Add a half splash of green. I crush down to pick up a can of bright green. The other green. This green. I carefully pour some of the other green paint into the mixing bowl. No, that's almost a whole splash. More white. Is green a good color to add? No idea. You're the artist here. Hint of a smile appears in the corner of her mouth. Do you lack an opinion? No, it's just that I have no idea. It's okay, because I just got an idea. Add more white. With this exclamation, I pour a minuscule amount of white of white the bowl next to it. It looks slightly whiter. Really? That's not good. It has to be like like the color when you wake up and you know that you saw the meaning of life in your dream, but can't remember it. Maybe it's yellow. Despite the impossibility of mixing a color like the change of seasons or any other nonsense being imposed on me, I find myself enjoying it more than I thought I would. Seeing a painting being born on the plastic wall feels like magic. I spend the moments I have between mixing paints, crouching down on the paving, and just looking at her work. Feels slightly intrusive at first, like breaking some imaginary intimacy, but Ren doesn't seem to mind the least bit. Maybe it's just in my head. Her entire presence emits a completely different air as she patiently works the details, adding layers of paint on top of other layers of paint, steadily moving her foot across the wall to add new shapes. 
When I managed to produce a passable mixture of paint, the rare smile on her face is oddly rewarding. Apart from the few words when discussing paint mixes, neither of us says a word for the longest time. And even though short discussions soon evolve into a shorthand, both of us developing and using weir weird impromptu code words for various paints and hues, as if there were some need to conserve words and breath and sound. We stay there late into the evening until it becomes too dark to paint properly. Did I cut the part off here? Yeah, I'll cut it off here. Alright, next time on Let's Play Katapu Shoujo, we will do something. It's gonna have to do with Hanako, and possibly Ren, and maybe even Shizune and Misha. But it's probably gonna involve Emmy first, because we're probably gonna go running. I don't know yet. We'll find out eventually. So, until then, um, take care. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video. You know, drop me a like. You know, favorite. Generally, if you really liked it, or you know, tell me what you think of it. Tell me what I can do better. And until next time, I, I still don't know. Well, like the whole Hanako storyline has to do with like, fire and making a show having to deal with well, making a ending having to do with fire would just be poor taste. And I can't really think of a good one. So, you know. See you guys next time. Yeah.